a smorgasbord of stimuli and we are on that's the chapter we're reading in the book called silence page 27 we do the same thing with the other nutriments with sensory food we may have the awareness to take in media that are wholesome and enlightening. Or, on the other hand, we may use video games, movies, magazines, or even engaging in gossip in order to distract ourselves from our suffering. Volition can also be healthy. Constructive motivation or unhealthy. Craving and obsession. Likewise, collective consciousness can be healthy or unhealthy. Think of how affected you are by the mood or the consciousness of the group you are in. Whether that group is supportive, happy, angry, gossipy, competitive, or listless. Because each nutriment affects us so deeply it's important to be aware of what and how much we are consuming. Our awareness is the key to our protection. Without protection, we absorb far too many toxins. Without realizing it, we become full of toxic sounds and toxic consciousness that make us ill. Mindful awareness is like a sunscreen protecting the sensitive skin of a newborn baby. Without it, the skin would blister and burn. With the protection of our mindfulness, we are able to stay healthy and safe and take in only those nutrients that help us thrive. Edible food, page 28. Most of us are aware that what we eat affects how we feel. Junk foods can make us feel tired, crabby, jittery, guilty, and often only momentarily satisfied. Fruits and vegetables, on the other hand, make us feel energetic, healthy, and well-nourished. Often we eat something not because we're hungry, but to console ourselves or to distract ourselves from uncomfortable feelings. Suppose you feel worried or lonely. You don't like this feeling. So you open your refrigerator and look for something to eat. You know that you're you know that you aren't hungry, that you don't need to eat. You find something to eat anyways. Because you want to cover up the feeling inside. When we have a retreat at any of our practice centers, we offer three healthy vegetarian meals every day. Lovingly prepared with mindfulness. Still, there are participants who are worried about food. I have a friend who, when he first came to a mindfulness retreat, could only think about what he was next going to eat. For the first two days of the retreat, he was hungry all the time and he didn't like the fact that 
there were lines for meals. He worried that the food would run out, even though it never did. Usually he would leave whatever activity he was doing early so he could be the first one in line for meals. On the third day of the retreat, this friend was in a sharing group where he was able to talk about some of his feelings about his father who had recently died. And he got a lot of support from the group. The group ran a little late, but when he got to the mill line, <clears throat> he realized he wasn't anxious. He had a feeling there would be enough food and he would be okay. I'm very glad we didn't run out of rice and vegetables that particular day. Sense Impressions Sensory food is what we take in with our senses and our mind. Everything we see, smell, touch, taste, and hear. External noise falls into this category, such as a conversation, entertainment, and music. What we read and the information we absorb is also sensory food. Perhaps even more than edible food, the sensory food we consume affects how we feel. We may pick up a magazine or go to the internet looking at pictures and listening to music. We want to connect and be informed. We want to enjoy ourselves. These are fine reasons for consume. These are fine reasons to consume sensory food. But often our real purpose in those moments is simply to run away from ourselves and cover up the suffering inside. When we listen to music, read a book, or pick up a newspaper, it's usually not because we truly need that activity or information. We often do it mechanically, perhaps because we're used to doing it, or we want to kill time and fill up the discomforting sense of empty space. We may do it to avoid encountering ourselves. Many of us are afraid of going home to ourselves because we don't know how to handle the suffering inside us. That's why we're always reaching for more and more sense impressions to consume. We are what we feel and perceive. If we are angry, we are the anger. If we are in love, we are the love. If we look at a snowy mountain peak, we are the mountain. While dreaming, we are the dream. A teenager recently confessed to me that he spends at least eight hours a day playing video games. He can't stop. In the beginning, he took the games 
in order to forget that he wasn't feeling good about life that he didn't under that he didn't feel understood in his family school and community now he's addicted to them he thinks about video games all the time even in the moments he isn't playing them many of us can relate to some version of this trying to fill up the loneliness and emptiness inside us with sense impressions. Our senses are our windows to the outside world. Many of us leave our windows open all the time, allowing the sights and sounds of the world to invade us, penetrate us, and compound the suffering in our sad, troubled selves. We feel terribly cold and lonely and afraid. Do you ever find yourself watching an awful TV program, unable to turn it off? The raunchous noises and experience explosions of gunfire are upsetting you yet you don't get up and turn it off why do you torture yourself in this way don't you want to give yourself some relief and close your sense window are you afraid of solitude of the emptiness and the loneliness you may find when you face yourself alone. Watching a bad TV program, we are the TV program. We can be anything we want, even without a magic wand. So why do we open our windows to bad movies and TV programs? Movies made by sensationalist producers in search of easy money. Movies that make our hearts pound, our fists tighten, and that send us back into the streets of exhausted. Conversation is also sensory food. Suppose you talk to a person who is full of bitterness, envy, or craving. During the conversation, you take in that person's energy of despair. In truth, much of the sensory food we consume makes us feel worse instead of better. We find ourselves thinking more and more that we are not enough, that we need to buy something or change something in ourselves to make ourselves better. But we can always make the choice to protect our peace. That doesn't mean shutting all our windows all of the time, for there are many miracles in the world we call outside. Open your windows to these miracles, but look at any one of them with the light of awareness. Even while sitting beside a clear flowing stream, listening to beautiful music, or watching an excellent movie. Don't entrust yourself entirely to the stream, the music, or the film. Continue to be aware of yourself and your breathing. With the sun of awareness shining in you, you can avoid most dangers and you will experience the stream of being pure 
the music more harmonious and the soul of the artist completely visible in the film. Bo volition. Volition. Our primary intention and motivation is the third kind of nutriment. It feeds us and gives us purpose. So much of the noise around us, whether advertisements, movies, games, music, or conversation, gives us messages about what we should be doing, what we should look like, what success looks like and who we should be. Because of all this noise, it's rare that we pay attention to our true desire. We act, but we don't have the space or quiet to act with intention. If we don't have any purpose feeding us, we are just drifting. There are certain people whom I see only once a year. When I ask them what they have done in the past year, many can't remember. Sometimes, for most of us, days, whole weeks, and even months go by like this in a fog. This is because we are not aware of our intention on those days. Sometimes it seems the only intention in us is just to make it through the day. Rather we act, rather we walk to the store Call a friend, take a step, or go to work. We have the intention, a motivation that gets us moving, whether we realize it or not. Time goes by very quickly. One day we may be surprised to discover our life is nearing its end and we don't know what we've done with all the time we lived. Maybe we wasted entire days in anger, fear, and jealousy. We rarely offer ourselves the time and space to consider, am I doing what I most want to be doing with my life? Do I even know what that is? The noise in our heads and all around us drowns out the still small voice inside. We are so busy doing something that we rarely take a moment to look deeply and check in with our deepest desires. Volition is a tremendous source of energy, but not all volition comes from the heart. If your volition is only to make enormous amounts of money or to have the biggest number of Twitter followers, that may not lead you to a satisfying life. Many people who have lots of money and power are not happy. They feel quite lonely. They don't have time to live their lives authentically. Nobody understands them and they don't understand anyone. To fully experience this life, 
as a human being, we all need to connect with our desire to realize something larger than our individual selves. This can be motivation enough to change our ways so we can find relief from the noise that fills our head. You can spend your whole life listening to internal and external messages without ever hearing the voice of your deepest desire. You don't have to be a monk or a martyr to do this. If you have space and silence to listen deeply to yourself, you may find within you a strong desire to help other people, to bring love and compassion to others, to create positive transformation in the world. Whatever your job, whether you lead a corporation, serve food, teach, or take care of others. If you have a strong and clear understanding of your purpose and how your work relates to it, this can be a powerful source of joy in your life.